Hey everybody, uh, today I went to a new reservoir. It was really busy there and I uh, hadn't been there in years so I had to go check it out. Did a little kayak fishing, went through some coves and uh, started clouding up so I decided to pack up and get out of there. So anyway, I figured I might as well end the day with a kayak tour of my Ascend FS10. This is my first kayak I bought because it was cheap and you could fish from it. Saw this one, it was on sale. I think they were $549. I got it for $500. I can't remember. Um, anyway, it's a pretty nice setup. Um, I'm 6'2, so I have a little trouble sitting in this one for long periods of time. That's what drove me to buy the 128T, so, um, which I like a lot better, but it, it's a heavy kayak. So, if I'm just gonna bug out and I need something quick, this kayak's handy for that. Um, I can lift it on top of the car easily. There's not much to it. You just throw in a seat and a paddle and a life jacket and a tackle box and uh, you're good to go. Bought the air tire dolly for it and I had a heck of a time figuring out how the dolly mounts onto the kayak. So I'll do a little thing on this video of what I've figured out how it works for that type of dolly. Getting it to attach to your kayak and getting it to stay on while you're porting it. Anyway, um, let's start with some of the mods I've done. Uh, I added an anchor trolley. So that involved putting in these buckles and this cleat. You got the ring for running your anchor through. My anchor is like a five pound weight. That from Walmart. Don't have it on me. Uh, it's got these little loops for holding your paddles on. One thing I like about this kayak is the seat. It's got a really comfy seat. Folds up and down. Um, and I can store lures under it. I have a couple here just for the example. Um, kayak does come with a rod holder which is really handy. I like to troll a lot while I'm fishing so having one of these is excellent. You just put your rod in there and you paddle around the reservoir and you just wait for the end of that rod to bend and you know you got a fish. Um, this kayak has a dry storage. Um, this is usually where I'll, I'll throw my keys in there, my wallet, sometimes my cell phone. Um, just keep it all safe and dry. This little tray here is handy for your fishing tools, your pliers. When you're changing lures, sometimes you can just throw lures in here. Um, got a great cup holder. You can also throw other things in there too. So when I get in this thing, there are some foot pedals in the front which I don't use because they don't go far enough forward for me. Um, but it is a fairly, I mean it rocks a little bit when you're in the water, but it's great for, you know, just getting out in the water quickly and fishing. Um, added GoPro mount, and uh, of course I got the paddle on the side here. Once in a while I'll stick something on top of here, and this, those little bungees are handy for that. And a lot of times when I'm paddling, sometimes I sit like this just to give my legs a break. One thing I don't like about this kayak is anything you put back here in the storage is really hard to get to. So that's why I usually put my lures in the cockpit here. Um, it does have the rod holders back here which is handy when you're carting the thing back and forth from the parking lot or your portaging and just dump your rods in there and it keeps them nice and safe and out of your way. I added a USB port here so I can charge my cell phone or my GoPro, um, a deeper fish finder. So sometimes if the battery dies on that I can just plug it in here while I'm fishing and charge it up. And I also added this meter here to kind of give me an idea of what the voltage is on my battery 
while I'm fishing throughout the day. Sometimes it's nice to know how much battery you have while you're out. Speaking of battery, behind the seat is, I covered this in my other video for the, uh, I sit on top kayak. This is my battery box I made and it's portable so I can use it in this kayak too. I threw in this wire harness and it just plugs right in an automotive power cable and then when the dash lights up I know we're good and that just sits back here out of the way um, this kayak weighs I think it's 65 pounds so for me it's easy to lift it and move it around by myself but having somebody help is always a good idea but sometimes you don't always have an extra person so this one's very manageable for somebody on their own. Um, I'll go over this back compartment here, which currently I have my tackle box in here, but usually I'll put in a, my lunch for the day. Um, it's got a pretty good storage back here. Uh, I also, when I fold up the dolly, I'll put that back here and strap it down while I'm kayaking so that it's it's there in case I need to portage or whatever. And then when I'm done kayaking for the day, I can put the dolly back under and head for the car. So it's got good storage in the back. It's just hard to get to when you're in the kayak. And it's got a drain plug in the back, which I've used. Um, there was a video I did recently where we were kayaking and it was really windy and wavy and this thing just filled up with water and we pretty much had to abandon that fishing trip so you can see me like draining all the water out of here that's pretty handy because it's hard to just pour it out i've lost these handles going down the interstate so what i did is uh i reinforced them with some quarter 20 hardware which there's nuts on the back side underneath. I think I had my little guy crawl underneath with a flashlight and hold the wrench on the nuts for me on the front handle. And that really beefed them up. So it and helps if you have a little kid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, these dollies, you can buy them. If you can find them, they make them without air tires. Um, the air tires are just a hassle because when they go flat, you you're kind of really having a hard time getting your kayak to and from places. So I bought this because that's all they had at the time, but nowadays they've got the solid wheels, which I highly recommend. That's what I have on my uh, bigger, my sit on top kayak. So anyway, what I noticed is there's nothing in the package that tells you how to use this when you buy it. And I watched several YouTube videos and kind of figured out how to strap it to the kayak so it's actually usable. So I'll go ahead and show you how to do that right now. So typically what I do, I put the feet in the back. These feet kind of get in the way. Sometimes I wish they weren't there, but um, I'll set it up like that. Bring the kayak over. Position it like so. And sometimes the further forward you get the wheels, the easier it is to move. Um, Off so, you can see so I have these straps that I got with my kayak carrier for the car. It's a tooly rack. Basically all it is is these little buckle straps, not ratchet straps or anything. But I found these work great for what I'm about to do. So to hook this onto your kayak, 
We'll take it around. Take it around this bar. And I tried to catch, I'll try to catch the cleat here to kind of hold it in position. And I come around the other side and do the same thing uh, around the kayak cart. So I'm grabbing the front bar here. Position the strap so that it's centered more. And you just run this through. Cinch that down tight. And then I take a second strap and I'll go around the, the back bar on the cart. Just like what we did earlier. Sometimes like in this case, I can run it through the bungee. Yeah, so what this does, it's kind of the same concept of grabbing the cleat as it keeps your straps from sliding off the back because they'll tend to do that. And then you'll be doing this whole process over again, I've noticed. <laughs> so anytime you can get these straps to stay put, you're doing yourself a favor. So then around the back bar, And sometimes like when I have stuff in the back, I can I can um, strap it all down too to keep it from bouncing out while I'm transporting on the wheels. Anyway, I got that one in. Yeah, you don't wanna, it's really easy to lose gear and it's really easy to forget these wheels somewhere and find out when you get home that you forgot your wheels. Been there, done that. Not really something you want to do that with. The cool thing about these straps is that they have these rubber cuffs. So that kind of protects your hole when you just tighten things down. You want it good and tight. So then, um, this kickstand, It's kind of dumb because to fold it up, you gotta fold it down. It's not really helpful. This is one part of this kayak dolly Design. I don't really get and I don't really like. If this wasn't there it's at backwards. all, it would be fine. I tried it spun around and then these just dig into the ground <laughs> and then it tends to tear the whole dolly off your kayak. So I usually run it this way. Easy to Move it around. Grab and go. So this kayak was great for starting out kayak fishing and getting into the sport. And something also awesome about this kayak, since I don't really fit in it, and I got the newer, bigger one, is now I have a vessel for my wife to go with me in. And, uh, she could tell you a few things about her adventures in it. I'm five foot four and I don't fish, but I do like to get out on the lake with chuck and paddle. So for me, getting in here, I've got lots of leg room and I can paddle just fine. The seat is great for my back. I'll get out there in the lake and I'll just kick back and I'll relax. Sometimes I put my feet up here, <laughs> which is nice too. Um, but I love it for just kayaking and paddling and getting out there on the lake where it's nice and quiet. And um, I can easily reach my lunch, no problems, because I don't have to worry about the fishing poles and all that other stuff. <laughs> uh, yeah.
Anyway, I love it. So, I use it when Chuck doesn't. <laughs> and it's nice to have somebody to kayak with. Yes. Yes, we do that on those trips where it's much needed. Get a, get a break from the kids' time. Um, I took it up to, we took it up to Island Lake was the last time I think I used it. Um, and I paddled for seven hours, I think, that day and just had a blast on the lake. There was only like maybe three other kayaks out there that week um, that we went. And um, so, yeah, I got to get out more. <laughs> My turn. <laughs> I uh, folded up the dolly and bungee corded it down. This is usually how I have it when I'm out on the reservoir of the lake. Um, it won't fall off the back, which is nice, and it's there when you need it later. So that's kind of how that works. Pretty cool uh, kayak review, I hope. Um, again, this was the Ascend FS10, and uh, I hope you got some good ideas off of this one. If anything, it's a great uh, kayak to start kayak fishing in if you're wanting to get into the sport or if you just want to kayak and maybe someday you might go fishing this is a great one to get one thing about this kayak is when you it really choppy water uh, it does fill up with water pretty quickly so i don't recommend using it when there's like white caps and high wind but um, if you're close enough to shore it works fine for that because you can get out and bail it out pretty easy but uh, it's never fun to really kayak in that kind of weather anyway. So when I'm out on the reservoir, I'm always watching the clouds and seeing what the weather's doing. Stay tuned for more fishing, more kayaking, more camping, hiking. Thanks for watching this video. If you like these videos, please subscribe and uh, you can hit the notification bell. Be notified anytime I do an upload. Thanks to Karen for Helping me out in this one. <laughs> Anytime. So, we'll see you next time.